it's applied through the system of Dubai municipality. So let me show you the structure of uh, Dubai municipality to give you uh, an overview of the, the uh, organizational chart of Dubai municipality. Dubai municipality is being headed by a director general. So we have some uh, different uh, sectors. So we have the business development sector, support services sector, corporate support sector, health, safety, environment, infrastructure, services sector, and engineering sector. So from here, Dubai municipality has uh, 43 uh, different departments. So by the way, uh, waste management from all the different uh, uh, department has the highest number of uh, employees. Okay, we have a, a, a count of 3,551 uh, employees under our department itself. So from, uh, from the uh, waste management department, we belong to the infrastructure sector. This is the Department of Sewage Treatment and Plants and Network, Agriculture and Irrigation Department, Department of Sewage Projects, Public uh, Parks and Recreational, Waste Management Department, which I am a uh, which where I belong, okay? Now, the structure of the waste management department, this is headed by uh, our director of the waste management department, consists of uh, five sections, cleaning, specialized waste treatment section, technical support section, studies and permit section. So from the waste treatment section, which is, uh, I am included, uh, this is, uh, included three units. Uh, we have the treatment systems unit, uh, the general waste unit where the, the uh, general landfill have been uh, handled and the hazardous waste unit. Now let's talk about the hierarchy of waste. So waste hierarchy is a tool used in the evolution of processes that protect the environment alongside the source of energy consumption from the most favorable to the least favorable action. The aim of the waste hierarchy is to extract the maximum practical benefits from the products and to generate the minimum amount of waste. So we have the reduce, reuse, recycle, recover, and the landfill. From the reduce, this is like a prevention. Using less material in design in the manufacture, keeping from longer or reuse or using less hazardous products. For the reuse, uh, we can check, uh, like checking, uh, repairing, refurbishing other items so that it can be reusable. Then recycle, turning the waste. Uh, waste uh, so product into a new substance, either by composting or other quality protocol. Then we have recovery. This is the uh, conversion to uh, energy, either by uh, energy recovery, uh, glassification, pyro or pyrolysis. Then we have the final, which is the disposal, wherein uh, if we have done all the other details, the last resort is going to the landfill. So first of all, uh, where does this the waste started? So this comes from the generator. The generator can be uh, industrial companies, household, residential communities. We can also include the, the shopping malls, supermarkets, even you yourself is a generator of the waste. So it started with the collection. So every day you will see uh, in the streets that there are municipality uh, employee who are collecting the uh, garbage. 
from this residential area, then transported it by the truck. So this is the uh, waste management chain. Then uh, usually uh, in Dubai, uh, we don't have any transfer station. So this goes directly to uh, either a waste treatment facility or it will go to directly to the landfill. Okay, in the waste treatment facility, it can be through recycling, recycling facilities. Recycling facilities can be uh, DM approved recycling facilities or the MRF material recovery facility. So we have also the composting uh, being done for those organic waste, uh, for those uh, sewage water uh, and aerobic digestion by the use of um, sewage treatment plant. So anaerobic digestion is a, a sequence of processes by which microorganisms break down biodegradable, uh, sorry, material in the absence of uh, an oxygen. So we have also the waste to energy. So now the next slide is about the objectives of the waste management department. So our target for not only the waste management, it is the target of the whole Dubai, as instructed by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, that uh, there should be a 75% diversion of the total waste generated by Dubai, which is Dubai vision of 2021. So that will be already next year. So we also, this is also to enhance waste minimization, promote recycling, the use recovery of the waste materials and also awareness uh, from waste producers or generators regarding the waste minimization practices uh, including also the best management practices. So what is the mandate of the waste management department? This includes the collection, storage, transport of uh, municipal solid waste, includes horticulture. These are the green waste like the plants, the trees, and the bulky waste. Bulky waste are some items which are uh, having, uh, like these are uh, furnitures or anything that it is huge. These this bulky waste are considered uh, non hazardous waste. So, if you can see also, we promote also maximum cleanliness uh, in the public areas where our laborers, you can see in the streets of Dubai every morning that they are cleaning the street. Uh, we also develop uh, and operate our waste treatment plant and disposal facilities for municipal solid waste, uh, construction, horticulture, hazardous, uh, medical, and the bulky waste. We promote uh, waste reduction, diversion to the landfill, environmental uh, awareness, and implement uh, legislation on waste management. So if there is uh, information. So we need to rely on the regulations on what do we do with the waste. So first of all, we have the federal law 12 of 2018 on the integrated waste management. What is this? Uh, the, what is this law uh, all about? This is uh, a law which aims to uh, regulate uh, the process of waste management and unifying mechanism and methods on the safe uh, disposal of waste. So this is uh, when we say federal law within the whole uh, UAE, this is uh, we use. Then we have some uh, local order, which is also only specific with Dubai itself. Okay. The next is the federal law 24. Uh, this is pertaining to the uh, protection of the environment. Uh, environmental monitoring, um, environmental impact assessment, uh, in the protection of the, uh, the marine environment. And we have uh, the uh, local order seven of 2002, wherein uh, this is uh, related to the uh, management of the disposal sites in the Emirate of Dubai. So we have the, the in Dubai, we have uh, for, for general waste or the uh, or the uh, municipal solid waste, we have the Alcosis uh, landfill. 
So all the municipal solid waste are being uh, diverted to this uh, to this landfill. And for those uh, hazardous waste, we have the Jebel Ali Hazardous Waste Treatment Facility located in uh, Jebel Ali for the disposal and treatment of hazardous waste. Then we have local order uh, 61 of 1991 pertaining to the environmental regulations in the Emirate of Dubai. 1115 uh, concerned with the medical waste and uh, local order 11 of 2003, uh, which concerns to the public health and safety and the environment. Wherein uh, it is required that uh, all waste uh, is mandatory. Uh, it is to be segregated from the source. So from the source itself, uh, you need to segregate the recyclable materials. You know why, why we need to um, to segregate? Because uh, as much as possible, uh, segregate the organic from the recyclable. Because if these materials are mixed with organic material, it is very hard uh, for the treatment in the landfill. So from the uh, waste disposal, we have uh, related four different uh, technical guidelines. We have uh, technical guideline 8, 9, 10, and uh, 11. Okay. Uh, technical guideline number 8 is the disposal of hazardous waste. This guideline is applicable for all hazardous waste resulting from uh, a legal or authorized business activity, person or party, either industrial or commercial establishment. It means that uh, only those uh, companies in Dubai, which has a valid uh, Department of Economic Development trade license or JAPSA or other uh, entity in Dubai are allowed to, to, to dispose hazardous waste in DM facility. So if you are belonging to other emirate or other countries, you are not allowed to do so. So those uh, companies or the generator can apply through our waste disposal system. Next uh, guideline is the recyclable waste materials. So this can be classified as like food materials, uh, cosmetics, consumer products, organic materials, uh, e-waste, glass materials, rubbers, leathers, used blasting media, contaminated solid waste. The example of this contaminated uh, solid waste are the, uh, the oil filters or the uh, oil rugs, also including uh, chemicals, used solvents, and the used lead acid battery and other uh, recyclable waste materials. Then uh, the next slide will be pertaining to the uh, technical guideline on the unwanted materials. So as per local order seven of 2002, uh, these are the list of the uh, classification for each uh, waste to be disposed in, uh, in our landfill in Alcosis. So we have the electric and electronic waste, paper, plastics, tobacco, alcoholic drinks, wood material and paint for consumption, cosmetic perfume, and uh, other healthcare uh, formulations. So uh, these uh, types of material uh, pertains for a certain fee. So these are available, uh, you can see that these are available in this specific technical guideline regarding the fees. These are readily available in DM website under the information bulletin and circulars. The next is the transportation of and handling of hazardous waste. So the same as uh, those are allowed uh, to be to dispose in Dubai. Uh, also, those companies who has a valid uh, license in Dubai are only the allowed one to, to engage uh, the transportation activity in Dubai. If you are in, uh, in uh, Sarja or other Emirates, you are not allowed to, to transact in Dubai. 
So you need to have a, a valid uh, DED license or Department of uh, Economic uh, Development trade license. So this uh, hazardous waste should be a roadworthy vehicle, which are being approved by the um, Road Transport and Authority or the RTA. So why waste disposal system is important? So everyone will be asking yourself, why is it important? Why? Because waste stays in the environment for hundreds of years or not even thousands of years without degrading. And this usually affect uh, our habitat, the ecosystem, the, uh, the, the, sea, the, the sea, the sea creature, the fishes, the birds. There's a projection that uh, by up by uh, up by the next 25 years, there would be an increase of 75% waste being generated by the people. So now uh, I'll just show you, uh, this is the uh, current, uh, the former uh, system that uh, we have. This is the permit uh, for waste disposal, the hazardous trade waste and unwanted materials. Uh, by the way, this is uh, an online system wherein this is uh, this can be applied uh, by the waste generator 24/7, any time of the day, even you are out of country, you can apply for the waste uh, for your facility uh, located in Dubai. So this is the old system. Uh, recently, uh, we have changed it with our new interface. So this is the current interface uh, of uh, the waste disposal service. So what are waste which are not accepted uh, in the, the waste disposal system? So from the waste disposal system, uh, the, the domestic waste uh, and the municipal solid waste are not accepted. So this, is, this should only include the... Uh, excuse me, uh, somebody is, uh... okay, thank you. So, um... sorry for that. So I just repeat that uh, the waste which are not allowed for disposal uh, through the system is the uh, domestic waste. Usually these are coming from the toilet or in the communities, uh, the household residentials, also the municipal solid waste, which are generated by the household and the residential areas. So there are three types or uh, three categories uh, where we issue the uh, waste disposal permit. First of all, we have the hazardous waste. So these waste are what we call uh, waste which are unsuitable for direct disposal in the environment or the sewer or through any traditional landfill. Why? Because uh, there's a huge risk uh, in the environment or the public health. So usually there are uh, four types of uh, hazardous waste. This could be uh, corrosive, it could be ignite, ignitability, this could be reactability, or this could be uh, toxic. Uh, an example of uh, hazardous which, which are corrosive, this could include the acids and the base. Uh, those which are ignitability, uh, we have the flammable uh, solvents, we could have the alcohol, we, have, uh, we can have the uh, organic solvents, the activity, uh, we have like the uh, sodium metal. You know, if uh, a sodium metal uh, can be uh, can interact with the water, it will explode. And we have also the toxic, uh, toxic uh, category. So type of this one are the uh, something uh, which are have uh, a poison. 
Then uh, in Dubai municipality, uh, as per our technical guideline, number eight, uh, this is uh, classified into uh, 19 categories. So like we have, um, this is how we approve uh, through our online system. Like if it is W1 for medical waste, W2 wastewater, and so on and uh, so forth. So uh, usually, uh, as per our technical guideline, if a company uh, generating uh, more than uh, 300 metric tons of uh, 300 cubic meter, I'm sorry, of, uh, of uh, hazardous wastewater within a year, they are required to install their own wastewater treatment plant. So it should be an in situ. So that's why we are encouraging the, the company to do uh, waste minimization as waste minimization, okay? So uh, for hazardous waste, uh, we can show you that we have a, a Basel Convention on the Transboundary Movement of Hazardous Waste. So even uh, the hazardous waste itself uh, cannot be um, cannot be accepted in Dubai for disposal, or any hazardous waste coming from other Emirates are not allowed for disposal in Dubai even this will be going outside the uh, country. However, we have uh, the Basel Convention, uh, which is being uh, handled or headed by the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, or in short term, the MOCA. So in Dubai, uh, in case there will be some materials uh, being diverted uh, to other Emirates, the receiving Emirates, like for example, Ras Al Khaimah, uh, they will. They should issue a uh, no objection certificate with the acceptance of the uh, the processing facility. Then uh, Dubai municipality will issue an NO NOC. So it is allowed if there would be an approval from the Dubai municipality. Even uh, like example of the use lead acid battery. Um, Usually, currently in Dubai, uh, we don't have a facility. So what our approved uh, companies, uh, they need to send it uh, to other countries uh, like uh, South Korea. So they will apply through the uh, Ministry of Climate Change under the Basel Convention of Transboundary, uh, Transboundary Movements of Hazardous Waste. So this Basel Convention, what is this objective all about? This uh, Basel Convention, uh, this one protect the human health and the environment against the adverse effect of hazardous waste from their origin and their composition as well as to their characteristics. It's this also for the reduction of uh, hazardous waste and promote env uh, environmentally uh, sound matter. The next type of um, waste uh, for waste disposal is the trade waste. So this is the non-hazardous wastewater generated from uh, industrial or commercial activities. So this is coming from commercial and industrial only. So uh, this does not include household or residential or what we call the domestic waste or the sewage water. This is a uh, trade waste where where the source is industrial okay, or commercial, like uh, cleaning of car, uh, cleaning of the cars, uh, cleaning of the factory, or wastewater generated in the process of a uh, food food factory. So here, the next slide will talk about the uh, the uh, trade uh, discharge parameters. So we have the uh, these are these are all the uh, standard going to the sewer. So like VOD, we have uh, 1,000 uh, milligram per liter. We have the COD or the chemical oxygen demand, 3,000. So anything 
which is above uh, the standard will be considered as hazardous waste. So the next type of uh, uh, permit we, app we approve is the unwanted materials. So this is uh, any non-hazardous uh, material as declared by the owner, which requires disposal. Okay. So if it is not considered as a uh, trade waste or hazardous, uh, it will be under the unwanted materials. An example for this one are cosmetics, the furniture, we have uh, paper, plastics, we have wood materials, we have the glass, we have metals. So here uh, we have some types of uh, waste. Uh, usually we have the nanosardus or the unwanted material. These are some types of uh, uh, materials uh, which are considered for nanosardus. We have an uh, example is the paper cartons, plastic metals. And for the hazardous, we have the oil, we have the, the used lead acid battery, lamp, solvents, and others. Did you know um, that the UAE waste generation rate per capita is uh, 1.8 kilogram? Okay, so with these uh, computations, uh, within a year, we are generating about 6 million uh, tons of year of uh, municipal solid waste. So this is uh, based on the population of UAE, uh, of, uh, of UAE which is uh, 9 million. So from, from uh, the waste disposal service, uh, we have the procedure on how the system goes. First of all, uh, the company should have the, uh, the UAE pass or the uh, username and password to access the, uh, the waste disposal service. So from the waste disposal service, the reviewer, me uh, being a reviewer, uh, will evaluate uh, the material if it is uh, categorized as trade waste, as a sardis waste, or the unwanted materials. From our team on the waste uh, disposal system, uh, we have uh, three steps uh, handling a specific uh, category. So for me, I handle the unwanted materials, including the recyclable waste materials. So for each uh, type of materials, there is a specific requirement. So I will just tell you the specific requirement. In case of a wastewater, we only require a laboratory analysis report conducted by a, a EIAC uh, accredited laboratory. This ensure that it will be the laboratory who will uh, conduct the who will collect the sample, not the the company because we are receiving uh, some uh, report that the uh, water has been collected by the uh, generator. So it could be the, uh, the uh, laboratory who will collect. In case of chemicals, uh, first of all, we, we need to determine what are these uh, chemicals. Is the chemicals uh, expired? is the chemicals uh, being used in the production. So you need to inform us uh, in the system, there is a remarks box to give us a, a, a detailed what do we expect. So the very thing requirement is the photographs. Once we see the material through the photographs, we have already the idea what are these materials. This must be supported either by uh, uh, material safety data sheets, um, and also a laboratory analysis report. Likewise, for the unwanted materials, uh, we require photographs and also, uh, also shipping documents. For the recyclable materials uh, from Dubai municipality, uh, 
we only require them a, a form. There is uh, what we give to the recycler uh, and, and also permit form for waste processing and recycling or what we call the acceptance letter. So in case of food material, uh, they need to have an approval first from the food uh, safety department where this is the FDCR or what we call the food destruction certificate. So these are some of the uh, examples of the uh, permit we approve for recycling. So if you will see there in the classification, you will see there the uh, classification is for recycling. Then uh, disposal location, it will say you to a specific company where the, the glass materials will be going for the uh, processing. Then uh, an example for, for a material which is approved for disposal, an example of this one is a cosmetics uh, going to DM facility uh, in Alcosis. So the next slide, these are some, uh, if you are aware, if you have visited uh, Dubai Municipality Parks, you will uh, see uh, like uh, a recycling center. Uh, these are all, these are usually available. You will find this, this uh, recycling, smart recycling center available in, uh, in the municipality uh, parks, like in Almanara Center, Al Nadapan Park, Al Kepap Center, these are all available. Where if you are a, a generator, you yourself, if you have some materials uh, like e, uh, electronic waste or paper plastics, you can, uh, you can bring it to this facility. Then, uh, Dubai Municipality also uh, accredit uh, recycling facilities. So these uh, uh, recycling facilities uh, usually has a valid uh, trade license in Dubai, as well as they are, uh, they are approved uh, with an environmental clearance for their specific activity. So this uh, list of uh, accredited uh, recycling facilities are available in DM website. Uh, you don't need to log in. You can just go to DM website under information and circular. Then you will, uh, it will be available in uh, environment and coast. Then go to waste uh, department. These are available there. So in case these recycling facilities are not complying, uh, with the guidelines, uh, there's a specific uh, penalty being imposed to them uh, as per local order 11 of uh, 2003. So Dubai municipality also approved uh, hazardous waste uh, transporter. So those uh, hazardous waste transporters should have a valid uh, license in Dubai. So these uh, companies uh, should have uh, a RACID system. So also this, these uh, materials, uh, like for example, if you are approved for hazardous waste, uh, you have a permit for municipality, it doesn't mean that you can carry other materials like uh, general waste. You can only... Uh, you can only transport a specific material approved as per your specific, specific category. There's are like, for example, under this, uh, this uh, information bulletin for the list of approved transporter, uh, a company will be given a category of A, B, or a specific, like A is for acid, B is for liquid hazardous, C is for solid waste. You can only carry or transport uh, waste material to DM facility or the recycling facility if you are approved for that specific category. Now, if you are not 
you are transporting not as per your approval, then you can be issued a penalty or a fine. Likewise, you cannot carry a, uh, a non-hazardous waste in a, a hazardous waste vehicle, okay? And uh, these uh, vehicles are uh, being tracked or we have the uh, RACID tracking system or a GPS embedded in their, in their truck where Dubai municipality monitors the movement of this material. So we can track uh, if they are moving, uh, they are idle or where they are right now in Dubai. Okay, this uh, RACID smart system aims uh, for the monitoring, for uh, for to ensuring environmental friendly disposal, as well as monitoring or eliminating illegal uh, disposal activity by the transporters. So the next picture I can show you the some best uh, management practices uh, where I have visited. Uh, this is a uh, a glass. Uh, Recycling facility. Uh, this is uh, in Jafsa. Okay, so they are collecting uh, different types of uh, glasses. Uh, they can even uh, collect window glasses, except for those uh, laminated glasses. So they will uh, crush it uh, from the system. Uh, they have this eddy current. No, different types of uh, where the eddy current were different types of glasses like uh, the brown brown and the green they can separate it from each other then uh they they will convert that it into collets or glass collets what we call them then uh they can now uh deliver this one to other glass uh factory like uh, the jebel ali glass factory the altajir glass uh instead of uh wherein wherein we can save uh um amounts of energy if uh, because usually the glass materials are coming from the silica where they use a lot of energy so if uh, if the raw material now will be coming only from the glass collects there will be less uh, energy that will be uh, needed and less uh, less expenses also for the company so do you know that the, the cooking oil are being also collected in dubai uh, Currently, we have two recycling facilities available in Dubai. So wherein they convert the used cooking oil uh, into biodiesel. So this biodiesel can be used as an energy or as a fuel in the, uh, in the truck or fleet. So the next slide is for the electronic waste. So in Dubai, we have the biggest uh, facility uh available in dubai uh, industrial city so they they uh they process the e-waste uh this one if you can see in the slide uh these are these are some of the e-waste so they they will be retrieving the uh the, ma the heavy ma the materials uh this includes uh the copper the gold usually the the e-waste uh contains uh, materials like the gold, uh, silver, copper. So these are the final products from the uh, processing of the e-waste. This one is the plastic recycling. Uh, wherein they uh, convert it to flakes. Uh, these flakes, uh, usually these are coming from the glass bottles. These flakes uh, will now be converted to other products. So it can be as uh, uh, can be for clothing, for other plastic materials. It can be made as a, a thread or any other materials. So I have some video here uh, for organic uh, waste itself.
na yata bosses mo tol. So this is how uh, we uh, The next uh, video is for uh, this one is uh, avocado. Usually before uh, where we are not uh, requesting the companies, all of this material organic, the food material, vegetables end up in the landfill. So all of this one are being diverted or zero uh, disposal in the landfill. So the first video was the uh, avocado. The next video was uh, the potato. So why why the need uh, for recycling? Uh, did you know that uh, Dubai municipality, the, the landfill, uh, we need to, uh, the reason for recycling is we need to extend the lifespan of the uh, landfill. Actually, uh, it is nearing already its full capacity due to the uh, to the uh, waste being uh, generated in Dubai. So, as much as possible, we in the disposal system uh, want uh, these materials to be diverted to the uh, landfill and to convert this one uh, as another material. So, they will make uh, this uh, avocado, this uh, this uh, potato. Uh, they will uh, mix it with the green waste or the horticultural waste and converting it into a compost. So the next slide, this one is uh, a construction and waste demolition facility. Uh, this is new in Dubai. Actually, um, it is available in a National Industries Park. Uh, before, uh, remember, uh, after uh, the this, the the demolition of a building, all of this one are ending up in the landfill. So we have a mountain pile of construction materials. Okay, uh, from the construction and demolition waste, uh, they will uh, crush uh, these materials and uh, convert it to aggregates. Aggregates later, they can use this one as a uh, raw material into uh, manufacturing of uh, raw pavement, uh, bricks. Then uh, those materials, uh, like uh, usually the CND materials consist of some steels, so they will uh, divert this one to a metal recycling facility. So the next slide, this is for the uh, cartoon uh, processing. So we're in the, uh, instead of uh, using the virgin material or the pulp, they use the, uh, the, the, uh, corrugated uh, cartoons uh, to make it uh, another products where uh, they can use for a new cartoons or other products like a uh, packaging and in dubai we have also a uh, recycling facility uh, to to process the uh, lamps and the bulb so here are the lamps or the fluorescent light so it will be processed in this facility and later on they will collect the mercury from the bulbs. Okay, for our contact uh, information, uh, we have the, you can uh, save this one in case you are a generator in Dubai. These are our contact numbers and uh, including our email, the uh, 
hazardous waste disposal in uh, Jebel Ali in Alcosis uh, landfill. So you can save this number. If you do have some uh, hazardous waste uh, material or any waste material for disposal in Dubai or any recyclable materials, you can contact us on these numbers. Thank you very much. Thank Hello. you so much, sir. Thank you. So thank you for uh, to everyone who have uh, attended this training. So we are open to any uh, questions that you want to raise about the training. Uh, you can open your mic. Everyone can unmute themselves. OK, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, you make mention of something when you were giving the lecture. You said four technical guidelines. Yeah. Yeah, then the number one on it says disposal of outside waste. Can you hear outside. me? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the um, disposal of outside waste. Uh, from, from waste materials generated to other Emirates or other countries as per Dubai federal and local regulations, these are not allowed for disposal in Dubai. So this is, this is prohibited. But for waste generated in Dubai, uh, we can allow it as if there is any re relevant uh, approval from other receiving emirates. Okay, so it is not allowed here in yeah, Dubai. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if you generate from, uh, up, you are from Abu Dhabi, you are a company from Abu Dhabi, and uh, you want to dispose a solvent, uh, it will not be allowed for disposal in Dubai because this is generated in, Dubai, in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi should take care of Abu Dhabi waste. Likewise, if material is generated in Dubai, then uh, it needs to be disposed in Dubai facility. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. Anything, questions more? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, you can kindly raise your uh, so, uh, unmute yourselves and then ask questions. Uh, hello, sir. Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, to Sir Anton, uh, questions ko lang po as regarding uh, mm -hmm. regarding for the waste collection or because uh, mostly po dito sa here in UAE in Dubai. So, wala ako napapansin na color coding uh, or waste segregation regarding for the waste keep. So, it is regulated po sa Dubai or hindi po? Uh, kindly, Kasi when, uh, kindly speak in uh, English, please, because uh, we have uh, some other nationalities. Uh, ah, okay. I'm sorry. So, it's, uh, reg uh, it's regarding po, regarding about uh, about uh, from the waste disposal company. So what, uh, what I observe regarding for this is the, the skip that they are using, that they are given to the contractors, especially uh, for the projects and the constructions. Even you are requesting for the domestic waste and food waste, they are giving a uh, same color code as I mentioned a while ago, uh, from from our the food waste uh, or the domestic waste uh, are considered municipality solid waste. So usually these are all uh, being put in one single skips. However, if the category of the material are like paper, plastics, metals, or chemicals, this needs to be uh, segregated from source. Okay. You need to have like a, a specific segrega segregation uh, available in your facility or your company wherein you can call 
a DM approved a recycling facility where they can collect it right away. So you need any recyclable materials. You you will not call uh, the uh, transporter going to collect this one for disposal. You need to contact companies which are approved for recycling of these materials, except for uh, domestic and municipality solid waste. Our waste disposal service does not uh, include this one in our system. We only uh -huh. process uh, commercial and industrial waste generated in Dubai. So it is outside the scope of our uh, of our uh, service. Uh, however, the, okay. however, the practice in Dubai is uh, this is uh, all together in one skip. These are all mixed in one skip. Ah, okay. That is uh, that is allowed to make it a one skip. If these are as so I've told you, these are food waste or the municipality solid waste, but not do not include the uh, recyclable waste material like paper, plastic, metals. Ah, so this okay. needs to be segregated from the source. Okay, because uh, that's one of my concern because uh, as of now, I am a project consultant for the almost of the RTA projects. So because I was imposing to the projects regarding for the proper segregation, and I was to impose also I'm imposing also the waste collection, uh, the waste collector, the company to provide the color coding of the the waste keep. So, but they are uh, they, um, yes, if, they can if, be able if, to provide. If you us. are uh, if you are uh, a private company, then you need to have a uh, segregation from the source. You need to provide your own. Yeah, we are. Uh, I'm uh, from the consultant company, so we have the contractors, especially okay. for the RTA projects. So we have the contractors that we are imposing on it, but the. The, the for example the collection uh, waste collector they don't have that skip that we are wanting for it because uh, I what I what I want especially because I'm working from the other Emirates and from the other country before so they have the waste, waste color coding for the skip so to, to avoid a confusion regarding for the workers especially for the uh, the laborers so it's at least they know what is the color coding so where they can put all the ways. So that's one. Of, that's what I just yeah, want to start regarding. All, regarding we we have the, also a specific uh, guideline available in the uh, DM uh, website uh, for the segrega seg mandatory segregation of waste materials. However, this is not included in our task under the waste treatment section. It is another uh, section who is uh, managing the task. Uh, okay. Mostly our role is for the disposal and treatment. So uh, Dubai, our department itself are, are divided in different sections. We have the operations. Uh, we have the studies and permitting section. Uh, we have those uh, uh, approval for the uh, specialized cleaning. So we have some different tasks allotted for us for different sections. So. This one is not the task uh, under our section. Oh, okay. Because, uh, Mr. Anton, uh, sorry, sorry to rebut. No, uh, I think Mr. Anton, uh, I think you have to guide them and uh, tell them what exactly the department that handles or the which sections that handles this uh, inquiry of our uh, good gentleman. Yeah, it is in the uh, it is being handled by the studies and permit section. Okay, studies and permit question, uh, section because when I check all the yeah the guidelines because i have also the copy of the dubai municipality guidelines because uh, this one also of the the references of the rta projects so i didn't found any uh any specific rules regarding for the color coding so that's why even we want to impose at the site the contractors and the waste collector company they are not providing us what we want and what, what we want to implement because uh, in the uh, at the site I want as a consultant I want the uh, I want the system the good system that will be do it from the start. So because you notice that some of the company here, 
if they are doing it from they are not doing it from the start it's very difficult to follow if you will implement in the middle of the projects so that's one okay, that uh, we are what the two i want to impose but the problem there is no guidelines about that so uh, this uh, one is anton can, anton, anton uh, sir uh, can i answer for that question to that question no? uh, sir actually uh, what you are asking no, is the system that you can uh, implement in your own uh, organization or in your own project as long as you are following the disposal system being implemented in Dubai. So you can refer, you can still refer to the guidelines mentioned by our uh, uh, our vice president, no, uh, the technical guideline number eight, nine, ten to eleven, no. So as long as you are following that, uh, whatever program like the color coding that you mentioned, uh, you can still implement. Uh, uh, in your organization and no one will uh, question you unless unless that uh, after you have this uh, color coding and you still mix the the, the wastes no like the hazardous waste with the municipal waste or the agro uh, construction waste no but then uh, the good thing in dubai uh, they can control all the uh, collectors or transporter because the transporter itself will uh, not collect your waste this is the thing that I can uh, uh, advise to you. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what, that's correct. That is uh, the contractor, the uh, waste collector. They're imposing the not collecting the waste. So because at uh, that time that I uh, explaining to them, I want the color of the skip. I want this color for specific uh, waste. Uh, they cannot able to provide us because they tell, they told me they had no guidelines about that for the color coding. Uh, there's a color coding in Dubai, but this is only referred to the, I think, to the municipal, uh, like the separation of plastic, uh, the cans, the paper, all this uh, recyclable uh, wastes that can be retrieved. But because, as I said, no, uh, as of this moment, if the law is silent, no, mm -hmm. you can still uh, implement in your own and uh, no need to color the, the trash bins or the skips that you required. Uh, you can put uh, at least by numbering, no? Uh, so that the, those people involved in the collection and the disposal, they will be familiarized in your system or your program. Yeah. Uh, okay, sir. So because uh, this was what I observed before, because even we are put, we are placing the name, even we are giving them the training, you know, because uh, especially for that one, that's why we are we are planning to arrive regarding for color coding. So. So this is not an issue because uh, this is the uh, this is one of the rules here because uh, that's correct. Even the waste collector department, if they are check the mix of the waste, they are not collecting it, and also they are imposing to the company to segregate it one by one. Yeah, 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 correct. And anyway, uh, maybe through this uh, forum, uh, we can uh, our uh, our uh, presenter no can suggest to DM. Uh, maybe it's about time to also to do the color coding of the uh, hazardous wastes that you are uh, referring to, uh, because right now we are following only the GS, GHS. No, also in the in the Basel Convention uh, that he mentioned. No, uh, there was no even in the Basel Convention. I think there was no color coding for the hazardous wastes, but only the code. Yeah. Okay, sir. And sir, as uh, to sir Anton. Is there a regard for the construction waste, especially for uh, like the asphalt, concrete waste? Is the company itself is uh, allowed to transport those uh, construction waste going to the Dubai municipality uh, disposal site? If or it is uh, going to the landfill, uh, it is required a uh, uh, a RACID system or a GPS tracking device. And there's also required a NAFIT. The NAFIT is like uh, the SALIC, no? Yes, sir. Uh, so because in the in the landfill, in the Alcosis and the uh, Albayada landfill, for the construction waste, uh, these are going to Albayada landfill. These are located in Dubai Al Ain Road. Okay, if you know... Uh, Yes, sir. I know that. I know that place okay. because okay. I just I visited all that already. Okay. That place. <laughs> okay. Because okay. during conducting the audit, I just want to verify that you want to check if okay. uh, if, if this okay. one does not have a uh, a nafit or the uh, the salic, they will not be allowed entry on the Dubai municipality gate. 
ah, they will okay. not allow so, it to come. So only those registered company. So the, the registered company will have a specific activity, construction and demolition uh, transportation services in their license, as well as they need to have a waste management activity permit for that specific activity. Although our section is not the one giving the uh, approval, it's the, uh, yes. it is another section, which is the uh, studies and permit section. Okay. So, but this, uh, the, as long the, com the company or the contract. However, if, if this, uh, this material, uh, because the, the purpose of the, the Rashid is that it is to go to the designated DM facility. And if you bring materials not specific for your designated, then we can track where are you going to by means of the RACID or the JPS. So we can give you uh, we can give you uh, um, penalty for for illegal, either if you are going outside of Dubai or disposing to another facility. Ah, uh, okay. So because uh, this one, sir, I just only to clarify that because they tell some uh, because as far I know, some of the contractor they are do they are uh, they telling they have the permit to dispose. So that's why I just want to clarify for that there is uh, allowed if there as a law have the permit. So because yes, yes. I think, long, uh, uh, you I... can you can uh, always ask them for their trade license as well as the waste management activity permit for that specific activity. Ah uh, okay. For for the general waste or the municipality waste it is the garbage uh, collecting services collection, uh, collection team. Yeah. Uh, for, oh, for the organic waste, like the plants, trees, or the food material going to the landfill, this is organic uh, waste uh, disposal services available in their trade license. So there's a specific, uh, in, the, in the hazardous, uh, hazardous waste uh, transporter uh, activity in the trade license, if you are allowed to transport uh, hazardous waste. So there's a specific trade license, and they need to have a specific approval given by Dubai municipality. Ah, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Only that's one I don't want to clarify uh, regarding the disposal. Uh, good morning, sir. Morning. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Can I post it? Pwede pong, pwede pong magbigay ng advice konti kay Joy Bermirez related to, to uh, color coding. Hello, Sir Anton. Yes, yes, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, for uh, Mr. Joy Premieres, uh, kasi po nagtatanong siya ng, uh, ng uh, technical guidelines. It's okay lang po ba? Uh, please, uh, oh, sorry, uh, as much as possible uh, in English because we have uh, other national Okay, uh, we, Okay, sorry. Uh, this is related about the inquiry of uh, Mr. Joy Premieres about the color coding of, of practice of color coding or the ways... Uh, so with uh, in Dubai municipality, there's no any technical guidelines, but he can refer to circular issue by the Dubai municipality. So that's only I can say about it. There's no any technical guideline, but there is a circular related to color coding. That's only, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the addition. Uh, okay. okay, please. Yeah, yeah, refer to a circular only issue by Dubai municipality. There's a there's a circular related to a color condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, let's ask one by one. So I think uh, Mr. Damoski have uh, one question. Sir? Yes, thank you very much. The question is, I have it. I have two questions to ask, sir. Okay, no problem. Yeah, the first one is, according to the government of Abu Dhabi, they established the Center of Waste Management called Tadwe. Yes. Are you with me? In 2008, across the Emirates, right? Okay, come again, come again. Okay, according to the government of Abu Dhabi, they established the Center of Waste Management called Tadwe in 2008, okay. across okay. the whole Emirates. Okay. The question now is, how does it have the effects, I mean, the positive effects on the disposal waste in United Arab Emirates as a whole? Actually, as a whole, uh, we have a specific 
local regulations in Dubai. As of now, uh, we don't have the integrated yet. I mean, the like what we have the new law, federal law, uh, uh, 12 of uh, the integrated uh, waste management. That uh, as of now, we are still following the local regulations in Dubai. So it is not allowed to dispose materials generated from other Emirates. What uh, I heard that they are coming up with one policy now regarding the disposal of materials through other Emirates. Like uh, if this, this uh, facility is not available in other Emirates, maybe another Emirate can take this one. Because Dubai, uh, actually as of now, uh, we can uh, divert other materials to other Emirates. If there is an approval from the receiving Emirates, like we have the blasting uh, grits or the uh, copper slag, uh, the garnet generated in facility in Dubai, if there is a no objection certificate from the receiving Emirate, let, let's for take example, Ras al Kaima Pujera, Dubai municipality can issue the approval, an NOC, a permit, then we can, the company can allow to to bring these materials outside of Dubai. But Dubai itself are not allowing as per regulation, local regulations in Dubai to process materials okay. in Dubai. Okay, in that case, is it advisable for a disposal to lift out from Dubai to Abu Dhabi or from Abu Dhabi down to Dubai without a crime? No, no. Come, come, come again, uh, I did not get you exactly. Okay. I said in that case, since it's not available here in Dubai, is it advisable for us to take a waste bin from Dubai to Abu Dhabi or from Abu Dhabi back to Dubai without the crime? As I've told you, uh, disposal or moving uh, waste material to other Emirates is, is illegal. Illegal. Yes, illegal. Illegal, illegal. And if we, if our operations team will find you, they will issue you uh, a penalty, or even uh, they will refer you to the police. Because okay, as much as possible, uh, we want to avoid uh, illegal disposal of waste material. Okay, can I proceed to the second question? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, the second question is, treating a wastewater and controlling the movement of hazardous wastes in Dubai. Did you get it? Hey, can you repeat again? Okay, I said treating a wastewater. Okay. And controlling the movement of hazardous wastes. Okay. Yeah, can you please explain shit better on that because I didn't get it well. So treatment of uh, wastewater. Yeah, of the movement of hazardous waste. Movement of hazardous waste in Dubai, uh, for the movement, uh, we have a technical guideline. We okay. have technical guideline number 11. For some information, uh, you can refer directly to the guideline. So as I mentioned earlier, only those uh, approved uh, generator or those with license in Dubai, uh, can, we can accept their disposal. They apply to the DM facility waste disposal system if they have a valid license in dubai this is for the generator generator okay yeah. the next is the transporter the transporter they can only move the the hazardous waste from from dubai or any parts of dubai even for going outside of the emirate if they have approval for hazardous waste vehicle permit so this hazardous waste vehicle permit has a uh, RACID or a GPS tracking device approved by the municipality. Other companies are only allowed within Dubai. Other companies can be allowed outside, outside Dubai. Dubai if they secure a specific permit for bringing this material, but uh, they need to have a specific permit, okay? Where they need to apply for first permit from the waste disposal service, they will have a WDS reference number as well as the HWTB permit or the hazardous waste transporter vehicle permit. 
Did I? Okay. Uh, for for wastewater, uh, for wastewater, uh, I actually I forgot to discuss more on the the trade wastewater. Since you have uh, already uh, asked for wastewater, we have uh, like uh, parameters. Okay. As I mentioned, uh, maybe I can. Check. Parameter, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, can you see on the screen? These are the parameters of wastewater. Can you see on your screen? No. Just make a screenshot, brother. Then uh, you can zoom it in your mobile or your laptop. Okay. But this parameter of the thing that you just mentioned. Okay. I don't really get it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why. That's why I am. Ex I I will be explaining further, brother. Okay. Okay. The parameters okay. we have the different parameters for uh, a specific. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, we have biological oxygen demand, BOD. We have the uh, chemical oxygen demand. We have the TDS, uh, TSS, heavy metals. So if one uh, parameter uh, exceeded, okay, if it is within yeah. the standard, the classification of the wastewater will be non-hazardous or the trade wastewater. So the, the route of this one, either either to the, the DMC where network, or this will be transported to tanker through DM facility in Jebel Ali. Okay, others, uh, we can use also the treated wastewater, the wastewater for uh, land drip irrigation in our disposal facility, or can be used uh, if this is within the standard, we can also approve it for the reuse of the company in washing vehicles or washing the flooring of the company. However, if one parameter exceeded the standards, okay, even one parameter, like for example, uh, we have the BOD, the standard is 1,000 milligram per liter. It is uh, uh, 1,500 then it will be considered as a sardus waste. So if it is considered a sardus waste, uh, we will approve it going to the Ali Hazardous Waste Treatment Facility with a hazardous waste uh, transporter. And these are non hazardous This can be... Uh, this can be transported by, if you you are the, in Dubai, you, this will be transmitted uh, trans, to the tanker. If you know the orange tanker, are you seeing usually in the streets, the orange tanker? These are usually collecting in the residential areas, in the uh, but, labor camps, and bringing it to STP in Jebel Ali. Okay. But in a case, okay, if I should get you right and I quote your words, you when you talk about the parameter, you main mention of the biological, the chemical TSS, then the waste tanker. Okay, in a case whereby, let's say, in an urban area, when uh, a land liberation or a landscaping is accepted or is required, is this tanker or the chemical biological TDS available, or is it? Let me say, does it have a positive side effect on this? Parameter as a whole. Did you get it? <laughs> I didn't get you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't mind my intonation. Okay, what I'm saying is when you are talking about the parameter, okay. Yeah, you made mention of biological, then the chemical TSS. Yes, yes. Yeah, then you will mention about the uh, waste tanker. <laughs> Yes, we stand. Okay, yeah. my question now is in let's assume in an urban area, not a city now. Okay, in an urban area, like when 
yeah, when a landscaping or a land vibration is to take place, mm -hmm. does any parameter has a side effect on this issue? That is my question. Does it have any positive effect? Yeah, there's there's a uh, there's a uh, effects because uh, we have a standard. There's a as I've told you, there is a standard. So if this uh, these parameters are above the standard, then it will affect the environment. It will affect the environment if you use this uh, wastewater. If this has la like a high TDS or like high in COD, it will affect the uh, environment. That's why we okay. need to monitor. Okay, so what you are saying is if it is on ITSS, it will affect the environment. So if anything, anything, it will affect because we have, the, that's the purpose of the standard is to allow the, the vehicle, uh, the, the, the wastewater going to a specific road, okay? Okay. If, the, if this is within the standard, it will go for sewer, because okay. if these are hazardous ways, uh, with the high in chemical going to the STP, it will affect the STP. It will kill the bacteria in the sewage treatment plant. Then okay, it will kill then, it will kill the bacteria if it is not being monitored. Yes, uh, those but, being the, those uh, tankers coming to the sewage treatment plant, they, there would be a sample, sampling by the STP department to collect sample, to monitor the parameters, not only the approval from the waste disposal service, but including monitoring of, of their standards. They have their own laboratory to check. Okay. And not if this is God. above the standard, they will reject it and uh, confiscate the tanker. When they confiscate the tanker, this tanker will have a penalty from the by municipality. And instead of STP, this will be diverted to hazardous waste treatment facility in Jebel Ali. Okay, now I got the answer cleared. So you should indicate that the parameter has to be monitored. So I will get it yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you very welcome. much. Yeah. Okay, um, we have uh, some questions on the group chat. From uh, one is from Miss Alan Nudas. Going back to the topic on organic waste, is there a plan or is there something in place wherein this organic waste is processed to be used as biofuel? Organic waste as a biofuel, uh, as of now, uh, we don't have in Dubai. Maybe in the next, uh, actually, uh, what I heard in the waste energy project, part of this one will be coming from the organic waste. Uh, once this is fully implemented, uh, the waste to energy project. So it, this includes the organic waste and the municipality solid waste where they will convert this one into energy or electricity. Okay. But as of now, what we have in Dubai is only for uh, converting it to compost or fertilizers. Okay, sir. Um, Ms. Allen, is the question answered or do you want further elaboration? Okay. Uh, we have another question from Mr. Victor Sia. How the process the domestic waste if there will be mix of quantity of e-waste, lamp, bulb, paper, carton, etc. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's a good question, actually. Actually, some materials uh, which are going, which are like uh, normal people uh, in Dubai will uh, put everything in the trash bin, correct? Uh, these are all mixed items. So these materials will not end up directly in the landfill, okay? We have a material recovery facility, okay? Uh, this is uh, like a segregation facility. So this waste uh, will be diverted first in the materials uh, recovery facility where they will segregate the recyclable materials, like the paper, plastics, metals, 
and any recyclable materials that can be used. And further on, it will be diverted to the recycling facility. So, so this will not go to the landfill. However, uh, for all those materials also that already in the landfill itself, like those materials, we have a, we have a, a third party approved by DM, which collected also the recyclable materials directly in the landfill itself. So they are collecting it uh, through the landfill where they collected the recyclable materials. So, so did I get uh, your question correct? Uh, did I answer your question? Um, sir Victor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, yes, sir. I'm almost to ask also the same question as earlier by Alan about this uh, waste to energy. But uh, I already hear that uh, Dubai is not yet, uh, I mean, uh, using this. Uh, yes, it's uh, currently, if you have seen in the few days in the Gold News, uh, it's being approved by His Highness. So it's already under process right now. Maybe we expect around uh, two years. So it's under construction right now. It will be located in Alwarsan, although I do not have the specific details of the project since I am not the uh, person handling this, uh, this project. However, what uh, I have uh, and what I know, uh, this, this is under construction. So maybe we'll, we'll be expecting in the next two years to, to see this project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anton. Then another one. Uh, is it available to your uh, DM website, the classification of a, being a uh, uh, waste generator? If in what case. Do, what do you mean, mean by uh, classification? I mean, uh, to classify as a waste generator, do you, uh, is it, uh, do you have a guideline in your uh, DM website? Actually, it's not. Uh, actually, every company are will be already considered as a waste generator. I myself, you, you are considered as waste generator in Dubai. But uh, there's a specific uh, which covered by our specific guideline for technical guideline number eight, nine, ten. So eight is the uh, hazardous waste. Um, Yeah, 10 will be the unwanted materials. So there's a specific guideline uh, involved for each different types of uh, uh, waste. Like for, for hazardous waste, we have the TG number eight. For unwanted materials, we have a TG number 10. For recyclable materials, we have a TG number nine. So this is a specific guideline where we, uh, where you can read it uh, to understand more uh, about this ma uh, waste materials. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Victor. Um, we have a message from Mr. Joel Tugonan, sir. Um, I think you can uh, lab, um, state your question about. Uh, expired medicines. I think this is about medical waste. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir Joel. Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, to Joel Togonen. Um, I think you must me message something about um, medical waste. So, do you want to elaborate your question more or? Actually, for the medical waste, for the other uh, hazardous waste, I have already idea. Only just my concerns about domestic waste and the uh, and this one, the domestic waste and the construction waste, because this is one of uh, the most of the problem that I'm facing in the construction. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, yes, from Mr. Tagonan, in regards to the smart recycling. 
expired medicine can be thrown here or just simply disposed in general waste bin, like in homes? Well, uh, actually, uh, as much as possible, you know, this, uh, this usually, uh, if uh, being a, a, a good citizen of Dubai, okay, uh, we encourage that uh, all the residents should, uh, should be uh, disposing it as, up, as per appropriate guideline in Dubai. So like uh, if we have the, if we can, if we ourselves can do the segregation uh, in our homes, so that is that is for the better, okay. So for for this uh, medical waste, uh, this is generated in the household or what, or what is the source actually? Um, uh, um, as per the message from it's generated from home, so. The, so that's the that's where the actually uh, what uh, what is happening really is uh, it is uh, all together in one uh, bin. This is what is happening. That's why it is being very hard for Dubai municipality in our treatment to handle all the different types of waste. Why, uh, as much as possible, most of the waste usually are generated with the uh, communities or the residential areas which are not segregated. Okay, sir. Uh, where is, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Joel Togonon. Uh, Joel, uh, are you still there? Okay, maybe it's not around yet. Uh, we have a question from Mr. American. Uh, sir, you can raise your, you can unmute yourself and you can raise the question. Um, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, yeah. Good, uh, good afternoon. This is actually, a, uh, I don't know if it's the right question. Of, actually, I'm doing my master's. Uh, there is a one question in occupational health and safety. There's a one question about the uh, the CO2, how we, uh, because CO2 is now is a major greenhouse gas, right? So is there any guideline from the Dubai municipality or in even the CW, CWM Center of Waste Management or any emirates or what is the procedure for the, uh, the reduction in the CO2 in the processes in the refinery? Uh, and actually, uh, sure. from our department, uh, we don't handle this. Uh, it is under the environment department. So you can get your concern directly on the environment, uh, the department concern for your query. Thank so you. I cannot give you the any details of this one because I am only uh, allowed to give information uh, related to what we are doing, which I have more knowledge. Okay, so this sir. is under the uh, environment department. If you have any concern, you can call 800-900 to connect you to environment department. So this is uh, under the en environmental planning and study section. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, bro, Anton, I think there's another question from Mr. Uh, Bishak. Uh, Mr. Bishak, are you still there? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, can you uh, ask Hello. a question personally? Yep. Uh, we got a recent uh, circular from uh, Dubai municipality on uh, um, circular number two of 2020 on comprehensive yes. inventory of the recyclable waste data. We got it okay. through Prakis. And yeah. what is the procedure? Uh, uh, is that uh, just we uh, maintain that uh, 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 inventory data or we, do we need to submit it to DM? It needs to be uh, submitted to DM uh, every second of every month. Uh, our email is available there where can, you can send it through our email. It's uh, so, A-S-B-E-L-E-L. -E yeah. Uh, it's the same. I think yes, it's this that, is right? <laughs> yeah, that's me. And my colleague, uh, Rajar, uh, Mr. Ravi, is uh, our telephone number is available there. So actually, we already inform our department that uh, we need to have a software for this one. 
actually they are still preparing for this one so it's it's so only for, for uh, uh, recyclable materials right uh, 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 this is uh, not only for the recyclable materials though the waste generated itself so if you see there there's uh, three columns okay yeah uh, what is the uh, activity of the company actually we are uh, diesel engine uh, servicing okay so what are the types of materials you generate we have uh, uh, oils uh, uh, oils and uh, general uh, office waste uh, then okay, uh, uh, we have uh, a waste treatment plant in, in our plant itself you have uh, like uh, in situ on site waste treatment plant uh, sorry All right on site on site yeah treatment yeah. Plant. yeah yeah it's a, so, it's, so yeah. the the first column there will be the waste generated can be uh, general waste uh -huh. and can be hazardous waste can be wastewater so from the second column you will put there the uh, types of recyclable materials from the general waste you will have like paper plastics metal glasses so yes, which company which those, company those. will be collecting this one and in case this general waste are going to the landfill then you need to uh, fill up the uh, the uh, third column which are those being disposed to the landfill so usually your uh, your transporter will be imdad i believe yes yes correct yes so you can get those data from imdad now for any recyclable materials fill up in the second column uh -huh. then uh by the way this the first the the second column and the third column of this uh, circular number two based on the uh, information is the total of the first column just to give you an idea so which generated ah, okay. Okay. which okay. generated recyclable recyclable plus disposed when you add that one that will be the total waste generated so okay. Okay. the total waste generated you can have the general waste hazardous waste wastewater and so on and so forth Okay, we have to say for the meantime, yeah. just uh, send it through our email. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so this this uh, we have different facilities. So uh, do we need to submit it uh, separate, right? Uh, uh, when you say different facilities, uh, what do you mean? You have another license, another branch in uh, Alcos, and we have in uh, definitely. If you have a different yeah. uh, license, then you need to submit it separately separately okay okay fine we're three thank dancers. you thank you okay so welcome okay miss moderator um do we have other questions okay um during the registration process um uh, there were some questions that uh, were raised so i will read some of them um, first is from Mr. Alvino. How long to process the disposal of our hazardous waste? Mr. Alvino, Mr. President, uh, can you clarify more regarding your question, please? No, uh, this is the one that I have asked in the registration form. No? Uh, how long? Is the process for the waste disposal at least for the benefits of the participants? Uh, from from uh, it, it includes on the time you applied actually. From from the time you have applied uh, and in ensuring that uh, you submitted all the requirements, we have uh, three working days of processing. So we need to 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 give you a feedback within the three three days period it can be less depending on the number of uh, applications we are reviewing any more questions yes um second is what is the importance of segregation when the contractor only empties the segregated waste into one place in the truck I need more clarification on that question. Um, uh, it's actually from Mr. Clever, but um, I think he is not here. So again, I would repeat, what is the importance of segregation when the contractor only 
empties the segregated waste into one place and the trucks. So it is segregated when you say it is segregated from the source, then then uh, all taken into one. Yes, truck. exactly. It's just placed then, into one uh, so, one so bin. Yeah, what's so the importance? So actually nothing happened. Because the the purpose, uh, as I've told earlier, that uh, from 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 the source itself that you need to segregate it, you will not call the transporter itself. What you need to call is the uh, recycling facility or companies which are approved uh, to collect the materials, the recyclable material itself. Because if you will be contacting the transporter, they will just mix all the items. So whatever you have done is uh, will become useless. So my advice is you need to contact DM approved recyclers for the collection of the recyclable waste materials. So that this material will not end up in a landfill. The question is, uh, is there a fees or additional uh, burden to the companies uh, doing the segregation of recyclables and they need to pay again the recycling companies. Uh, what are the best uh, way or strategy for the company to at least uh, save a cost for their, uh, I mean, for their uh, budget, no, in terms of waste management? Actually, uh, some materials uh, has, uh, I mean, uh, has a value. Okay, uh, some e-waste material like the oil, batteries. Uh, the, uh, the recycling facility will itself buy it. They will give uh, a specific money to the generator instead of paying paying them. So not all the, although to take uh, what is really happening is uh, as much as possible. What happening is, I mean, uh, the sometimes the waste uh, materials uh the recycling is more than the uh than the disposal itself i think uh most of you who are uh recycling have encountered this issue however uh being uh being a part of the being a part uh of the resident in dubai uh we need to we need to share something uh, that, uh explain more further uh, the word um okay sir uh there uh, one last question from the registration process that was uh, that was raised earlier um at the current scenario what are the biggest waste contributors or factor that is needed to be addressed accordingly? Uh, can you repeat again? Uh, um, at the current scenario, what are the biggest waste contrib contributors or factors that is needed to be addressed accordingly? I think uh, this question, uh, bro, uh, Anton, I think this uh, question can be referred to all uh, to yeah. get their opinion because uh, this is a general question that can be at least uh, whatever answer uh, can contribute you know, uh, or give an idea to, the quest, uh, to those who ask the question. Yep. But anyway, you can start uh, answering this one. So actually, uh... For us, uh, Dubai municipality, uh, our sometimes uh, we we uh, we struggle with some waste materials, uh, which uh, we do not have a, a recycling facility. So actually, uh, before a material uh, will be applied to to the, the waste disposal service, uh, we are evaluating the uh, the characteristics of the waste. So in case we found there's a possibility, uh, uh, we are encouraging them uh, to coordinate with a DM recycling facility. 
usually for the possible uh, recycling. Although our struggle is really the, the fees. Uh, usually the disposal, let's take for example, this disposal will cost only 150 in DM facility. However, in the recycling facility, it might be more like uh, 300. So this is some of the issues that uh, we are facing uh, as the DM, uh, DM authority. However, as part of uh, as part of this uh, the the um, the management of uh, waste in Dubai, uh, each company should share their part, since uh, it is being instructed by uh, His Highness that uh, every company uh, and there's also the target like that seventy five the diversion that each company should cooperate with the uh, Dubai uh, Authority because uh, as you know uh, our landfill uh, will uh, will be full in the next few years so we need to extend the the uh, lifespan that's why we are encouraging all the companies to uh, to recycle of the waste Did I answer the questions? Uh, any, or Mr. President, you can add more? Roy, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, Rogel, are you still there? Yes, sir. I think uh, uh, your expertise is needed in this question, in this type of question, referring to the uh, how we can address this uh, waste, uh, I mean, uh, the generation of waste, no? which one we are going to prioritize like this? Actually, sir, uh, everything starts with the planning. Um, uh, I, I'm not saying that there is a lapse on the part of the Dubai municipality with regards to the um, waste management system, but everything should be in line with what the uh, Dubai municipality plan is with regards to the uh, development of any project or any uh, company. To, to start in the first place here in UAE. One of the bottlenecks, like what uh, Sir Anton said, is that not all type of waste have a counterpart recycling facility in UAE, especially in Dubai. I think the best way for the Dubai government to address this issue is that whenever there is a manufacturing facility that will be uh, started up or will be starting up in Dubai, there should be a counterpart, a mechanism or tool or any facility that will address the waste management system of whatever waste generated by that facility. That will address the life cycle uh, perspective from cradle to grave. In this aspect, uh, it, will in, it will incorporate already the mechanisms uh, that are necessary to address the issue. Uh, one of the reasons why I pointed this out because one of the requirement of UAE government is to address the, what we call that, the rat being a ratified member of, um, of uh, United Nation Environmental Protection, uh, which is one of the requirement of the municipality is to at least reduce the uh, hydrochlorofluorocarbons in, in the UAE um, by at least 35% uh, by 2021, and so that we could be able to achieve the 100% uh, total ban of hydrochlorofluorocarbons uh, by 2050. This is as part of the Paris Agreement and as part of the sustainable, Sustainability Development Goal of United Nations. This is in line to the question that has been asked by Mr. Amir Khan with regards to the carbon dioxide, uh, probably carbon dioxide footprint or means of to eradicate carbon dioxide uh, as far as UAE is concerned. The problem with this is that now that one of the requirement is for us to reduce the hydrochlorofluorocarbons in the atmosphere by 35%, the, the problem is that how Dubai municipality will address the issue of disposing the equipment and the tools that 
is being utilized at this moment using the hydrochlorofluorocarbons. So the, the problem here is that, okay, it's easy for us to ban hydrochlorofluorocarbons, but the question is what about the refrigerators, the chillers, everything that is using Freon-12, which is a hydrochlorofluorocarbon. So what's the mechanism for them to recycle it or to remove that from the atmosphere or, or, or at least prevent it to go to the atmosphere? So this kind of things should be addressed from the planning stage. If this has been addressed, because problem is Dubai is a central hub in the Middle East region as far as trade is concerned. So all, pro all prod products coming from other countries are concentrated here in Dubai. But if there is no mechanism in place to recycle or to prevent the, uh, um, what you call this, uh, adding up of this type of waste and, and not being no, no mechanism to recycle this, this will be the problem. Um, Basal convention limits us to move, to move hazardous or even uh, hazardous waste to other countries. So there's no other way for us to, to address this by, by definitely addressing it in the planning stage. And that is my opinion, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Roy. Uh, but from my own uh, perspective, no, referring to this uh, question, uh, the waste management as explained by our uh, uh, presenter, uh, when, if we follow the solid waste management chain no, and this principle applies to all, no, uh, the significance of having uh, participation and involvement of all the uh, citizen, the people living in a certain uh, area or even the country, uh, if they are participating to the solid waste management program or waste management program, as well as a system, uh, the waste disposal system, for example, of Dubai, uh, we can still at least meet no, or achieve uh, a su successful uh, environmental uh, and sustainable uh, environmental program, I mean. No? Uh, yeah, you're correct, no. But uh, we still don't know uh, the real answer with, when it comes to the to the carbon uh, emission uh, requirements. But even the United States, I think, uh, they are uh, uh, unable, no, to meet. Uh, that's why uh, they are not included. I think uh, when it comes to this convention. So um, uh, the Dubai Dubai municipality, uh, even the Dubai government, they are doing well in terms of waste management. Uh, there are many players. Uh, there's a so-called PPP, no, the public-private uh, uh, participation. No? So um, the problem maybe uh, will happen uh, if uh, the government was unable to implement a prop, uh, suitable control measure when it comes to the violators on the waste uh, regulations or guidelines. Uh, for example, no, um, there's still uh, many people uh, they are unfamiliar, no? uh, those tanker people, for example, they're still uh, throwing or uh, discharging uh, wastewater on the sand, no? which is really prohibited in Dubai. No? So these uh, people uh, should be catch no, and give penalty or even uh, the closure of their uh, company. So, uh, if we are talking to the, if we are talking about waste management, there will be a generator, there will be a, a good information or awareness program, and there should be a, a, a control measure also in the implementation of the regulation. Yeah, that's all. Uh, that's the only thing I can share. Yeah. Thank you, Press. Thank you, sir. Um, we have one question from Mr. Victor Sia. Is there a plan from DM to provide a separate or disposal bin for expired medicine and or other hazardous waste coming from domestic household in case that this can help to DM and segregation? Actually, uh, regarding your question, 
we need to to bring this one to our management because i am not the actual person who can uh, but i can i can uh, i can uh, suggest this information to to have actually however because the the expired medicines is only few in quantities that's some of the problem you know it is a uh, few quantities however uh, the medicine should be taken care of because uh, as per dubai municipality the the medicine are considered as a sardus waste and uh, the practice that uh, we know being done in dubai these are mixed with the uh, general waste i this one i will uh, suggest this one to our management okay mr victor yeah thank you for that mr anton okay uh, thank you think, for that. Uh, uh, in addition no, to the question of uh, mr victor uh, with regards to the expert uh, uh, medical uh, medicine no i mean no? Uh, I think uh, we can also refer to the waste treat treatment uh, in Debel Ali if they are, if they can include this one in this uh, in our uh, treatment facility. Yeah. I think I have another question about this uh, carbon dioxide because Dr. Roy being mentioned the about this uh, chemical banning of some chemicals. So right now, carbon dioxide has a uh, role in fire extinguishing, especially for the uh, electrical fire. So, okay, uh, well, I don't know if uh, Dubai has a uh, plan of uh, upcoming uh, banning of this chemical. Thank you for your question, Mr. Victor, but uh, I am not the, the person uh, who can answer this. Uh, it needs to be referred to another department, uh, which is under the Environment Department. For this, uh, this uh, CFCs, uh, this is under the Environment Department, and also for banning of specific material are under the uh, Environment Department. Okay. Uh, Thank you. May, I add up, may I add up to the question of uh, Mr. Victor Sia because he mentioned my, my name. Um, you know. are, are you referring, sir, to the banning of carbon dioxide or are you referring to the banning of the hydrochlorofluorocarbons? Uh, banning of carbon dioxide because uh, I know that there is also an effect on our uh, environment or uh, atmosphere. Um, at this point, sir, I think with regards to the ratio of the in, with regards to the impact to the environment, with regards to the ratio of the amount of carbon dioxide that is being produced, as far as uh, for the purpose of fire protection system, it's very minimal compared to the carbon dioxide that we ourselves, as a person, um, is generating and emitting to the atmosphere. Um, that is the reason why in the United Nations Environmental Protection, we are required to monitor our carbon footprint. Um, the objective of the 2050 requirement of the convention is that we need to ensure that we limit our carbon footprint by in such a way that the projected temperature increase in the global temperature should not be, should not be more than 1.5 up to at least maximum two degrees Celsius because their projection is that if it increases more than that, then the global temp then, then the implication with regards to the low-lying areas in the in the globe will be uh, catastrophic. And it has been already seen been seen with regards to the last uh, typhoon that happened in the Philippines, the typhoon Rolly, which was which has the the I think the strongest or the worst strongest typhoon ever in the history. So these are the implications of, in the climate change. But with regards to the fire protection system, I don't think so that carbon dioxide, the contents of those things uh, have, you can say, significant bent to the 
impact to the climate change. I hope, sir, I have addressed your concern. Yeah, because in Philippines, uh, uh, where this, uh, this type of chemical has been banned for, uh, for uh, fire fighting use, like uh, likes of uh, FM200. Um, I think the municipality needs to try to check whether what is the uh, current practices in the global arena as far as the uh, use of chemicals and fire protection system. Uh, I think more on the coordination between the environment department and the uh, health and safety, considering that there is an implication um, to the environment due to the use of this substance in order to protect the protect the health and safety of the people. So I think it's a tough decision. Uh, yeah, uh, referring to that, I think it's a tough decision uh, even to the regulators no, to decide whether to use or not to use to implement or not to implement that matter. Because at the end of the day, uh, all of the rules and regulations that being uh, implemented, uh, the main priority is the protection of the people or the safety of the people. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope the question is answered, Mr. Victor. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, um, lastly, we have one question from Mr. Ed. Regarding Basel Convention, can we have ideas if we will be transporting used engine oil from Dubai to other countries like in the Philippines? Is Mr. Ed available? Sir Anton, good afternoon. Yes, Mr. Ed, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. we okay. are uh, saving some inquiries before when I was there in the, in Dubai. So we where actually, are you right? Where are you right now? I I'm here in the Philippines. Philippines. Are you Philippines. sure? Are you sure? Yes, sir. I don't think so. I don't smell. <laughs> I don't smell like Philippines. I smell. Uh, <laughs> I smell from different place, not the Philippines. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, we have a, a good potential buyer from the Philippines. They have a treatment plan. Uh, this is what we're trying to work out with Mr. Victor Sia, right, Mr. Victor? So they're willing, the, the requirements of the engine use oil is a, is a huge, like 170 metric ton per month. So in other countries uh, like Oman, Oman uh, supplier is transporting um, Month, on a monthly basis, around 100 metric tons. So um, my question, because when I was there, we we're trying to work out with Mary, with my company, and trying to, to, to look for, um, uh, well, the, the, the material, the materials, the supply, and how it will be processed to be able to, to, to transport it to the Philippines. This is, right? Uh, am I getting the right point, Mr. Victor, right, sir? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you also mentioned my name. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's close. Uh, 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 actually, that is uh, our plan. <laughs> you, so this is your plan, huh? You will yes. transport use oil. Actually, yeah, but, uh, for, uh, but yeah. to recycle. To recycle. Actually, to recycle. We have uh, a good buyer. Actually, uh, this can be allowed if you, you will get an approval from uh, Minister of Climate Change and Environment. However, uh, okay. however, uh, the the processing facility in Dubai will be affected, like your company, your previous company before. Yeah, you know uh, what is happening to the waste recycling facility for used oil. They are fighting to to regarding the generators to get the generators, and with the recent uh, pandemic that happened, there is a less uh, use of uh, oil materials. And in the coming, 
in the coming years to come, there will be the uh, there will be mass production of the electric cars. So there would be actually less use also of fuel. So I, I believe you need to also to to study this information that make that also that will also are or is affecting now the business for the waste oil. Yeah, yes. I get it, sir. So at least we have the idea to try to yeah, uh, the climate. For, for, for the meantime, since change. we have already uh, used cars, no? imagine if it's already affecting yeah. the, the used cars. So if body, the best thing is you look for a company. A company should establish like a recycling facility for uh, lithium cadmium uh, batteries like uh, Dr. Rogel mm. uh, is suggesting. <laughs> because uh, we, we now uh, there are this uh, hybrid uh, system for the cars, remember? They are using fuel as well as the batteries. Yeah. Now we are already receiving uh, information regarding the hybrid batteries. And these hybrid batteries are more of a lithium cadmium uh, batteries. So it's not the used lead acid battery. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, this is the new generation of the uh, batteries right now. They are using lithium uh, as the main uh, ingredients. And so aside from that, not only the cars, but also the the Diwa, Diwa itself is uh, using to to for the, uh, uh, consumers of electricity to come up with the, their own uh, PV plan or uh, this solar panel. Yeah, correct, correct. So most of these are needs to emphasize on the uh, renewable energy. So in the in all over yeah. the world, uh, now we have the solar. We have the wind power. So most of these ones are not coming from the fossil fuels. But I think the question of uh, Edmer, if I'm right, no, uh, um, is referring to the procedure of uh, bringing or uh, exporting the used uh, oil no, from the Philippines going to other countries. Am I correct, uh, Edmir? No, from uh, specifically from Dubai to Dubai to Philippines. Uh, Philippines. Although I answer him that uh, yeah, I got it. Only I only, only uh, Minister of Climate Change and Environment yeah. will will decide. Yeah, and aside from and aside from that, Edmir, no, uh, just follow the principle. Uh, uh, Basel Convention approved uh, the importation and exportation of any uh, waste, no, if First, there's an approved uh, acceptance from the receiving country. Correct, Second, correct. if they have the treating facility or they are capable of treating all those wastes that are going to their uh, country, this is the, the, yeah. the principle that you have to follow. For example, you are going to bring the used oil in the Philippines. The question is, are we capable in treating this used oil? Huh? So they are, they are, uh, sir, they're actually a legitimate company in the Philippines. And um, initially, the, the arrangements will be, they will process all the permits when it comes to receiving the material in the Philippines. But the uh, supply, yes. it, it, they are legitimate, yes. legitimate companies. They, it, they have uh, treatment facilities. We will discuss on that uh, further with Mr. Victor. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, you're correct. Uh, but the principle is even the company, you know, just only for the sake of discussion. Uh, yeah. Even if the company is uh, licensed, certified, and yeah. they have experience, uh, when it comes to the volume of the use oil that you are going to uh, import, for example, no, uh, how how know uh, how competent, how capable the the facility that they have. No, otherwise it will be stored, or otherwise it can cause additional hazards and nuisance to our uh, country. No, so this is the thing that we have to consider. That's why uh, yeah. uh, we are studying uh, not only a CP but the in integrated uh, risk management. No, yeah. So, 
uh, this is the thing that you have to consider before uh, going further with this kind of uh, a transaction. Uh, yeah. But the Basel Convention uh, uh, stipulates uh, guidelines that are uh, favorable uh, to the to any country as long as they are capable of treating anyways. Yeah. Anyways, yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Um, additional, sir, Alvin. Actually, if 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 there are supplies and the procedure is clear regarding migration, there is uh, more than willing to to buy, and they will process all the documents when receiving. And what we the supplier will only process for the sh the the shipment. But it's very nice, actually. What what what's the problem? It's a bullish bullish market, meaning. They need the stocks. In fact, they are re regularly receiving um, use on Zen URL from different countries like in Oman. Um, yes, it, it's, um, they're needing it very bad. But the problem is we tried to work out for a couple of months when I was there. But well, the first the first reason was the price, and the second was the process. Because there, I think Mr. Big, there was no shipment company who can cater or provide the services of taking those uh, engine oil from Dubai to Philippines, right? Story. Yeah, the shipping uh, shipping company. Mm. Okay, sir. Um, at least uh, I just opened this up with our uh, advisors. <laughs> we can deal this further. We can deal this further. <laughs> it's a sure business as long as we could have the supply, but yeah, it's, it's hard. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Edmir. Uh, just PM Anton and uh, admin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a question from uh, Ma'am Jubilin. Ma'am Jubilin, uh, is there a question that uh, you receive from other participants here? Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon. They're asking me for the certificate, uh, for the training and training slide as well. So I just tell them that based on the mail they receive, the information was there. Training slides and the certificate will be given and uh, when they already paid the payment. Is that yeah, right? It's, yeah, uh, it's given. Uh, no need. Uh, we don't need to explain further here. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they just only receive uh, the email. No, so mm -hmm. just uh, just follow the procedure. Uh, we mm -hmm. already explained to them the details and how to get the certificates and the slide copy. So whatever question uh, uh, they can at this after this training they can send you uh, a direct message. Yep. Thank you, Ma'am Juby. But you don't have a question because you are working also in medical. As I already <laughs> answered. As of now, it's clear. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Uh, Miss Moderator, uh, any further question? Otherwise, we can. I think uh, we almost done and finished with this. Uh, presentation. Uh, at the moment, I think we finished all the questions. Um, okay, um, since there's no questions, I think we can uh, consider uh, summarize the training, sir, and then we call it off. So, so again, uh, on behalf of Pilsa and um, uh, the admin members and officers, uh, we would like to thank our vice president uh, for at least uh, imparting knowledge uh, and a thorough information about the waste disposal system in Dubai. No. Uh, we are hoping for your uh, I mean, extreme support uh, in our organization to at least uh, continue, uh, so we can continue helping uh, safety practitioners and other uh, aspiring uh, safety professionals. Uh, and whatever, uh, if they have a request for a training, we have some experts like Dr. Roy who can deliver different topics as special requests. Uh, so uh, uh, thank whatever you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And I think, uh, Mr. Anton, uh, any message at least? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh,
Uh, I hope I have uh, imparted some uh, information to you uh, that will also help your company. And also um, for you to understand more uh, regarding the waste disposal system. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, you can call me to the my office number or your email uh, related to uh, waste disposal service. Thank you very much. I think we need to have a screenshot. Uh, so normal, no? so new normal. No? Mm -hmm. Hi, maybe uh, Sir Rogel has uh, what do you call this one? A message, Doctor Rogel. Uh, you have uh, final, any message? Final 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 finale. Uh, no, sir, actually, just to thank um, Sir Anton for spending her his time with regards to explaining to explaining to us the procedures with regards to the waste management of Dubai Municipality. Um, as a competent health and safety and environment professional, our mandate is to at least comply with the legal requirement, and I think that's the that's the most important part of uh, a competent health and safety professional and environment professional. So having this information given to us, especially if you're living in Dubai, is uh, important and, and, and paramount for all of us. So thank you very much, sir, for imparting your time and, and your knowledge and your expertise on this subject matter. And um, hopefully this will not be the last. More topics and more trainings to come coming from uh, Sir Anton. Uh, with his vast experience uh, in various areas in the Bay Municipality, not not to mention those uh, experiences in the Philippines, also in Federal Bureau. Uh, sorry, and uh, not Federal National Bureau of Investigation, so NBI. So I hope more of this kind of trainings will be given to us, and of course um, with the roster of trainers of fields uh, headed by our Sir Albino Liado. Uh, we can be assured that uh, more trainings will be more beneficial uh, on the days ahead, especially having this kind of norm that we can only meet each other through um, cameras, uh, through cameras. So thank you very much for, for spending your time with us. That's it, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. I think we can have a screenshot then after we can finish. Yep. Um, I'm uh, may I request everyone to switch on your cameras? Ms. Maria, no? iPod. How are you, Ms. Marian? I'm okay. Thank you, Mr. Albino. It's our school <laughs> iPad. <laughs> That's why it says Marian iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Alan, Mr. Tobilova, request everyone to switch on your cameras for the screenshot. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sir Anton. Thanks. Welcome, thank welcome, you, welcome. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Okay, ready? Ah, thank you, Papa Anton. Thank you, Po. Welcome, welcome, guys. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Mr. Director. Okay, I'll take the screenshots now. Thank you, Mr. Director, and thank you for my question. You're welcome, Mr. Demoski. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you, is there any way we can get a certificate? Demos, Demos. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there any way we can get a certificate? We will send through email. Uh, I think you receive an email. Uh, we will uh, reply to your to your email. Just uh, today, today, today we will you will receive it. Okay. Thank sir, you. Uh, Thank you for Sir Anton, pwede po makana ng copy ng slide, sir. Pwede, hindi pwede. Pwede ko ng email. Hindi po. So wait for so the email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go with the uh, process. Huh? <laughs> There's procedure to follow. Okay. <laughs> when next are we going to have something like this? No shortcut. <laughs> no shortcut. No shortcut is allowed. We need to abide by the procedure. <laughs> when next are we going to have a conversation like this? Uh, sir, we have trainings every other Fridays. So for all for upcoming trainings, we will release it via our group chat, uh, LinkedIn group, and from our members who will share it as well. Okay. 
once thank again, you thank you to all participants who have dedicated their time to attend this training and especially to Mr. Anton for uh, giving or for importing us this knowledge about waste disposal system in Dubai. And anything related uh, regarding the training and the certificates, you can just refer to the email as mentioned earlier. If you have questions, please drop us an email or you can message uh, Miss Juvie through WhatsApp. Once again, thank you and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, guys. Thank you, everyone.